With great and furious abilities does the war priest strike down their enemies. Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to The Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Always unapologetically me, apologizing every step of the way. Now, we are continuing on with the Pathfinder War Priest Guide, building our immovable fanatic, and we are going to be covering their class abilities today. But first, if you haven't done so already, go on down there, hit the subscribe button, and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. Be notified the next time we upload more content here to the channel. But now, we continue on. So like I said, we're covering their class abilities today for the War Priest. And the first thing that you need to know is the proficiencies. As a War Priest, you are going to have simple martial weapons proficiencies and you're going to be proficient with your deity's favorite weapon. You're also going to be proficient with light, medium, heavy armor and shields except for tower shields. Important to note that there. So this gives you a pretty wide variety of options and combinations of equipment and will allow you to deal the maximum amount of damage while maintaining the highest level of armor. Handy considering that we're not going to have the highest dexterity score. Another thing that you get is spell casting. You're a two-thirds spellcaster, meaning that your spells will top off at sixth level. You cannot cast spells that are opposing to your alignment or somehow against your creed, uh, code of ethics, whatever might be in line for your particular faith. You choose and prepare your spells in advance. However, you can uh, change prepared spell slots into heal or inflict damage spells. So that's a handy little bit of flexibility there, there for you. And then after that, uh, also at first level, you gain an aura. It's nothing really special here, it's just something that you generate. Uh, you give off a powerful aura that registers well for the various detect alignment spells. So detect evil, good, law, chaos, all of that. That'll all register pretty hard for aura, which, I mean, it doesn't really seem to hinder, doesn't seem to help, so that's all it is. But really, really nice and handy though, you get Blessings. These are thematic bonuses that range overall in their quality and usefulness and will help to define your character further. They're also going to get their own section in next Saturday's video because there's quite a few blessings to cover and the effects overall uh, need to be discussed just a little bit more in detail. So that'll come around again, but blessings are going to add a lot of utility and ability to your character. The next thing you get at first level is Focus Weapon. This is essentially just the Weapon Focus feat for free and affects the Sacred Weapon ability that you also get at first level. You apply it to your primary weapon choice and have at it, and that weapon will be your mainstay throughout probably the entirety of your game unless you decide to pick up Weapon Focus for another weapon. But I wouldn't recommend that just because even though we do get some bonus feats, I still would say keep that feat around for another combat feat. Something else that will provide much more mechanical benefit to you in the long run. Now, the Sacred Weapon ability I mentioned before, you also get this at first level, and this gives you the ability to override your weapon's damage. At level 1, you're going to be dealing 1d6 points of damage when you use this, and by level 20, you'll be dealing 2d8, assuming you stay a medium-sized creature, and don't say, I don't know, somehow use magic to enlarge yourself and make that permanent. At 4th level, and then every 4 levels after, you gain the ability to give your weapon a plus 1 enhancement bonus, topping off at a maximum of plus 5 at level 20, and you can do this as a swift action. Uh, this bonus stacks with other existing enhancement bonuses, so if you're already wielding a plus 2 weapon, you can throw on another plus 2 bonus on this at level 8. 
You can also imbue your weapon with a number of different kinds of enchantments, some of which will depend on your alignment. You, you, uh, you can use this for a number of rounds that's equal to your War Priest level. So this gives you a handy bit of flexibility there and allows you to maybe not have to worry about sinking so much coin and resources into heavily enchanting a weapon by leaving a certain amount of uh, enchantment space free on your equipment you can then uh, flexibly and adaptively apply different enchantments to your weapon to fit a particular combat situation better. For example, if you're fighting undead, you can use this ability to apply or create holy effects against undead, assuming that you're of a good alignment. So again, very, very, very useful ability and gets better as time goes on. But then the next ability you get at level 1, lots of level 1 abilities here, is bonus languages. You get to add Abyssal, Celestial, and Infernal to your list of bonus languages. I mean, that's not bad, that's nice, but we're not going to be really super worried about that, and we're also not going to be an incredibly intelligent character. But then, kicking in at second level, we get Fervor. You use the strength of your faith to heal your wounds as a swift action or those of your allies as a standard action. And this can be used a number of times per day equal to one half your war priest level plus your wisdom modifier. And you will be able to heal 1d6 points of damage plus another 1d6 for every three war priest levels, topping off at a max of 7d6. Or you can deal this as damage to undead. This gets reversed if you're an evil war priest, though. In that case, you're going to be inflicting damage against the living and can heal the undead. And as a swift action, you can consume one use of your fervor ability to cast a spell. Uh, casting time has to be one round or shorter, and you can do this as a swift action, and it doesn't provoke an attack of opportunity or require that you have a free hand for spell casting. You can only target yourself with the spell, but this still makes so many of your different buffs just massively useful. You can do this at on the fly at a moment's notice as needed. So this is a great use of the fervor ability. Probably better than just flat out healing, but having that healing in your back pocket, being able to do it as a swift action, can keep you alive in a pinch when, if say somehow in combat, you do need to heal yourself and you're not using a wand of cure light wounds. You can do this real quick, give yourself a quick boost and keep yourself going in the fight very very great ability and then at third level you start getting bonus feats and it's at third level and every three levels thereafter you select a bonus feat and you count your war priest level as your attack bonus and as fighter levels for qual for the purposes of qualifying for different combat feats so this adds a great level of combat utility to your character overall allows you to play around and be flexible with this as well as uh, meshing in your blessings and your sacred weapon ability and then the uh, spell casting that you get access to very very cool and allows for a very unique dynamic and interestingly effective character but then for fourth level you get a you get an ability it's okay it does it's not detrimental but probably not something you're going to use a whole lot and that's channel energy this works as the cleric's channel energy class feature whereas a standard action you consume two uses of your fervor uh, the damage is equal to what your fervor is able to do so uh, if you're second level you're going to be doing 1d6 points of damage. Uh, and you will do this in a 30-foot radius centered on yourself. Creatures that are in injured by the energy can make a will save DC 10 plus one half your war priest level plus your wisdom modifier. So again, useful, but it's the two uses of fervor that kind of makes this unappealing. Again, you can 
do this it might be useful in a pinch having that little bit of nova damage or channeling that energy to um, help uh, help in other ways if you have some other some other feats or means of uh, using channel energy differently but really overall this is just going to be something that sits in the back pocket probably gathering dust it's not going to hurt anything but you're not going to see a lot of use for this and then for 7th level, we get a pretty solid ability here, Sacred Armor. This works a lot like Sacred, uh, sacred Weapon in that you can enhance your armor with Divine Power as a swift action. This gives a plus one enhancement bonus, plus one for every three War Priest levels after 7th, max of a plus five. And of course, like Sacred Weapon, these bonuses stack with existing enhancement bonuses, totaling up to that max of plus five there. And you can create a number of different enchantment effects, and this can be used for a number of minutes equal to your War Priest level, and those minutes do not have to be consecutively used. One minute will last you plenty for most combat encounters. Uh, when you use this, you may also use Sacred Weapon for free as a free action for one fervor. I said for free there, it's not quite for free. It's the free action part, but you have to spend a fervor. But getting to do both of these things at once at the start of a combat counter makes this pretty damn useful. There's been a couple of guys that said this comes in late and that the fact that it uses fervor diminishes its value, but I'm inclined to disagree. Seven is early enough where going from a plus one suit of, say, full plate to a plus two suit of full plate, that can make a big difference for you right there. Just that slight difference. And the fact that, again, you can use Sacred Weapon to help start boosting your weaponry for the cost of one fervor, that's a pretty sweet deal all the way around there. Again, you may not always use Sacred Weapon, maybe not always at 7th level, but later on, definitely it builds up and it pays off with in dividends the further along you advance in level. But for the last and final ability, or at least uh, ability that's not related to spellcasting, you get Aspect of War. It's your capstone ability kicking in at level 20. You channel an Aspect of War and become the martial fury of your deity. As a swift action, you are allowed to treat your level as your base attack bonus. You gain a damage reduction of 10 that's not negatable by anything. And you move at your full speed, ignoring any encumbrance or armor penalties that you may have. Additionally, your uh, using your blessings does not count against your daily limit. And this lasts for one minute and is usable once per day. So you're not going to use this in every encounter, but you're going to use this for those encounters where it really counts. Typically against the big bad evil guy, some of his captains or lieutenants, some significant encounters are where this is going to be used. The only real downside to this is that it's your level 20 ability and most campaigns never make it that far. Unless of course you're starting off level 15, level 17, then maybe you'll see it eventually. But this is a really great ability, pretty solid all the way around. Not the most impressive capstone ability I've seen, but given that your attack bonus is that middle of the road okay progression, not the good progression like paladins, fighters, and cavaliers get, but a solid one. Getting to boost that all the way to that full fighter-like attack bonus progression is great. That damage reduction is great. That movement ability is fantastic. And I think movement can be severely underappreciated sometimes in Pathfinder, but this ability allows you to overcome those limitations you normally face and just truly excel. These have been the class abilities so far. There are, of course, alternate class abilities, and uh, uh, Stephen Ward had commented on uh, making mention of uh, a class archetype, something that alters the class abilities a bit. We'll talk about that at some point here. It's definitely well worth mentioning, I think, but that'll have to be for another time. So. What did you think? Go on down in the comments below and let me know your thoughts. Did you like this? Did you dislike this video? Go down and let me know and engage in the discussion. I'll be more than happy to join you all. Also, once again, if you haven't done so already, go on down there, hit the subscribe button, and become a regular member. Join the alumni of the Gamers Den. 
But with all that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all so much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night. Thank you.